Bethsaida, all those Jewish-held towns and places. And we know that when he was near the city of the Samaritans, that he did not enter into the city of the Samaritans. He actually was on the outside of the city in the way that would have been conventional for the Jews at that time to maintain their distance in order to maintain their ritual purity from what they saw as something that was impure and a heresy because the Samaritans believed that they could worship God on their mountain. They could worship God and sacrifice to him like the patriarchs of old with the fathers of the families killing sacrifices on altars that were outside, not in the temple uh, the, the temple complex in Jerusalem, but there on the mountain of Samaria. And this was a very, very important distinction between the two peoples. We know that when the Hebrews came into the land, that many of their men found local women. And when they married, they were unclean for seven generations, according to the Levitical law. And some of the men, instead of returning back to the proper worship of the Jews, instead maintained their separateness from the people of uh, the promise, from the, the Jews who held the covenant of God, and attempted to make their own covenant with God. They attempted to maintain their own worship and their own rituals, and they never attempted to regain uh, unity or recognition with the, their Jewish brethren, and instead stood on the outside of that communion that God had created for his people there centered around the worship that he had uh, commanded from Moses. And so we have a very interesting situation. This is a situation that really, in many ways, looks like the situation of Christianity today. It's a situation where you have two groups, all claiming the same heritage, <coughs> who worship in different places, and maybe with some slight variations in ritual or liturgy. And you see that these two groups had no love for one another. Jesus oftentimes would point this out. There were many different uh, stories that Jesus told and that we see in Scripture where we see the antagonism, the anxiety, the lack of love, the anger that existed between these two groups, one another for some of these differences. In this story, we see a very clear Jewish perspective on the religion of those people who surrounded the Jews both those who were pagan and also those who were Samaritan. Jesus here very clearly makes an analogy between dogs and those who have an uh, untrue or heretical view of Scripture and of the truth. But yet, Jesus was not like most teachers in history, like most religious leaders that we see today, because he didn't reject the people that came to him. And so... Whilst he was able to maintain his disagreement with the religion of the Samaritans, he didn't reject the people that came to him. And the woman very clearly says, do not even the dogs eat the scraps at the table. And this is an interesting thing. Most of you in my family would remember that we've had a lot of contact with Mormons. We love these Mormon families. We love these people because God definitely loves them and has shared himself in a very unique and special way with them. But we're not Mormon. We don't believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet from God. And we don't believe that the Book of Mormon is revelation from God. And yet we can still love these people. We can still love our friends who are Mormon. That means we can reject the doctrine as incorrect and untrue. And yet we maintain complete openness and love towards those people with whom we disagree. This is the Christian spirit. This is what is lost by fascism, by hate, by all of these very extreme so-called Christian groups that try to turn our hearts against one another and make us hate one another and think that God inspires our hate. God does not inspire hate. We know this for sure, for certain, because God says that he is love. This does not mean that because we love others, we accept sin or heresy. This is a very important thing that we have to 